The OSSC and Framemeister are two feature-rich but also pricey options for converting your retro console's analog video to higher res digital signals. This takes the heavy lifting and lag-inducing responsibilities of deinterlacing video off of your lesser competent television and performs them in one of these types of dedicated devices. As you all know, reduced lag for games, especially those that require precision timing, is a must on modern televisions. All of this comes at an expense though. Neither of these two options are what I would consider cheap. The OSSC is a little over 200 US dollars and the Framemeister is about 330 shipped. Well today, we'll take an early look at another possible option that is a little more friendly on your wallet. All right, without any further buildup, the device I'm referring to is the RetroTINK 2X by Mike Chi. Now, by Mike's own account, this is a simple line doubler and isn't necessarily meant to compete head-to-head -head with the OSSC and Framemeister. Those two heavyweights are very feature-rich and will provide options well beyond what the RetroTINK 2X can. That said, though, if you're like me, maybe you don't need or want all of those additional features and something more simple like the 2X can suit your needs. Something I haven't really talked much about recently, but that I've been actively pursuing, is a shift to an LCD as my primary display. Now, before your pitchforks come out, I still have my CRTs. Actually, I have two Sony Vegas that I don't plan on getting rid of anytime soon. However, capturing footage and recording videos was getting really messy with original hardware and CRTs, since there's just a multitude of cables and switch boxes to deal with. So on the side, I started modding whatever consoles I could for HDMI output. Currently in 2018 though, I don't have a great HDMI option for several of my consoles. Yes, there's always emulation, but ultimately I'd prefer to play on original hardware whenever possible. Most notably, I need an HDMI option for my Neo Geo Omega and Duo RX. Both have the ability to output via component, but my LCD has no component input and I can tell you that my Elgato capture device seems to really hate 240p via component. All right, here's where the RetroTINK 2X comes in. With this device, I should be able to simply plug in my component and audio from the Omega or Duo RX and then output via HDMI at 480p. Sure, there are some cheap boxes you can find out there that can already do this, but Mike's goal has been to create a device that completes this task with quality and low latency in mind. In other words, this was designed with a gamer's needs and expectations at the forefront. Looking the device over, you can see the input options are the already mentioned component video, as well as composite and S-video. The S-video is a really nice feature for me as well, since that's my only option on my Genesis and 3DO. Audio input is our standard red and white jacks, and then we have a switch that will toggle between the various inputs. It looks like there is a smoothing on-off switch, which I suspect would be the equivalent to enabling bilinear filtering in RetroArch. I personally prefer to have this turned off, but people seem split 50-50 on that one. Regardless, Mike is giving you the option to either use it or not. Finally, the end product here is a 480p or 576p signal via HDMI once your source is line doubled. The website also states that there will be a pass-through mode allowing you to simply out whatever your input resolution is if you needed to do that for any reason. So ultimately, at the end of the day here, the pros are that this should be a quality device that allows for low lag gameplay on a modern television. Currently, Mike measures actual lag at five scan lines or 83 microseconds. Two, the RetroTINK 2X supports a variety of legacy inputs, including composite and S-video. And finally, the device is about $100 cheaper than the OSSC and $200 cheaper than the Framemeister. All right, so what are the cons then? For this price point, you aren't going to have a lot of the configuration options found on the OSSC or Framemeister. You're pretty much going to be locked at that 480p, 576p as your final output. It would have been awesome to have a little bit of variability there, but again, for the price point of this device, that's just not going to happen. Another downside is the current lack of a built-in scanline generator. Now, I personally don't see this as a negative because I wouldn't use it, 
but just like the bilinear filtering option, I know this is a personal taste and that some people would prefer to have them turned on. Finally, recognize that there still will be some lag with this. As previously mentioned, early tests from Mike are showing about 83 microseconds. I still suspect that that's much better than a $20 job from Amazon, but just be aware that it is present and keep your expectations somewhat in check. The RetroTank 2X is currently up for pre-order on RetroTank.com, and since the initial run is low volume, it's coming in at $110 plus $8 shipping and handling. There are only 50 units in this first batch, and actually I can confirm that's down to 49 because I bought one, but Mike says subsequent runs will be higher volume, which should help drive the cost down just a little bit. If you are grabbing a unit now, it does say it will come as a fully assembled kit, complete with a plexiglass enclosure. So that is what we know about the RetroTank 2X for now. I might weigh back in with some video samples once this is in hand and let you know what I think of it. Until then, let me know what you guys think of this and whether or not you plan to pick one up. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. Later, guys.